Okay. How are we sitting? Do we have people watching? Anybody? <clears throat> Can anybody see me? Is everything good this time? I see chat. Chat's a good thing. Okay, we're getting some people. I think it's working now. We can see you. Are you guys seeing this? Is this is this is this showing up? Is, is that right there? This this thing right here. Is that you guys? Do you see this? And maybe that right there, but this one for sure. <laughs> okay, good deal. Oh man, I gotta tell you guys what's going on. <laughs> you are not gonna believe it. I found out why my live stream chat wasn't working, and it is absolutely, look at that sun is low, absolutely mind-boggling. You want to know what it was? Look at this. It's because of my charge pack I'm using to keep my phone powered up. It's not the charge pack. I've done this before. It was the cable I was using. It was a, it was a USB-C cable I had bought online, like a six-footer, to power my phone while I'm doing a live stream, and some reason it was interfering with the chat. And it would block it. But as soon as I unplugged it, the chat would work. I have no idea. So I have a shorter cable on it now. That's You can see the cable. <laughs> I, I it's, That's mind blown. I have no idea why I did that. That is so weird. Okay, well, anyways, welcome to the stream, guys. We're back. That's the guy I had difficulties last time I did this stream. And I kept trying and kept trying. And it wouldn't work. It'd work at my house because I didn't have it plugged in. Then I'd go out in the field and plug everything up and go. All right, guys, welcome. Welcome. We got it figured out. We're good. I can see your chat. I got a lot of people saying hello and good stuff and you're the best and you guys are all awesome too. It's a little later. I wasn't really planning on doing a live stream tonight and then I was like, you know, it's a Friday night. People stay up on Friday nights. It's a beautiful day. It'd be a great time to go do a crop tour with you guys. So I'm sorry for all the ones out there who are overseas. Ooh, this is really late for you. If you're watching right now, that's awesome. And you're 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 a champ, but if you're tired, don't stay up for the stream. Just like go watch tomorrow or something. What's Leg Arms doing? He's gone. We we kicked him off the farm like ten minutes ago, a long time ago. I don't know when he'll be back. We'll see. So one of these days, I already got a super chat. A buck. Phoenix gave a buck. Thank you, Phoenix man. Appreciate it. Okay, let's change the streamer. I want to show you guys this real fast. I know we're doing a crop tour, but I am standing next to this behemoth. Uh, let's not do the wide angle. That makes it look a little smaller. Let's do the let's do the regular. If I can switch it. There we go. All right, check out these bad boys. <clears throat> these are the LSW 1400s from uh, Goodyear. Titan Tires Goodyear. These things are amazing. They are so big. And if you guys notice right here, the ladder is not fully swung out because it hits the tire. It's not hitting right now. There's enough of a gap. But we have to extend the ladder out a little bit. It's not hard to do. There's just a couple bracks and we've got to loosen a couple bolts. It'll slide out. We might have to make a little spacer. But other than that, this will slide out and then we'll be fine. And then leg arms notice that the combine with these new tires isn't as level as it should be. So we might have to adjust. We have to adjust the tire pressure definitely on these. They're still pretty full. But we might have to raise the rear axle up a little bit. And there's, a, there's four bolts on each side. It's not too hard to do. That way the back end of the combine will be leveled. So we haven't quite gotten to that yet. But yeah, these are the, the Goodyear Titan LSW 1400s. These are the world's largest production egg tire. So yes, there are bigger tires out there, but this is the world's largest tire built for egg purposes. And these babies are awesome. So pretty cool, huh? It looks good on this uh, 8230. I got some other get, uh, cool things coming for this 8230. A bunch of uh, Thomas LED lights. So you guys are the first to hear that. So they're going to go all over it. So Beast Bine, we call him. This is Beast Bine, is getting some awesome upgrades. And this one over here, don't worry, is not left out. This one's still got some cool stuff like leather seats. It's got the leather seats package in it. This one doesn't, unfortunately. It's got the cloth. But uh, we're going through these. we got to switch out the concaves and modules to get them ready for pea crop. And uh, yeah, on back here, guys, we've got... Our headers, these are 42 or 45 foot uh, Macdon, they're in case, case design, Macdon built, I believe. Uh, one's like a 2013, one's a 2012, 11, so they're slightly used, slightly used headers. But they look like they're in pretty good shape. Um, this all came from Torgerson's, you can see right there. Got their badge on it, so we're excited. They have bird poop all over them because of the building the birds were in. So we got to go through these, just make sure they're up to snuff. This will be the first time any of this equipment's been used on this farm. But you know what? 
it's going to be one one amazing harvest with these things. The downside is our crops aren't looking as good as they should be. We uh, we were hoping for a bigger crop this year. Nothing's ruled out yet. We we don't know until we're in the field until we cut some acres. So who knows what the actual yields are going to come in at? But we're looking at about two weeks, two weeks probably for yellow peas. They're just finishing up blooming right now. So once the flowers are gone, it roughly takes about two weeks we think to get the the plant dry enough that we can cut it. But the pods are still filling. So, but that's still good. I guess we don't need this arm swung out like this still. We can push that back. There we go. That looks better. Nice. Got a $10 donation from The Bomb. Hi. Hey, The Bomb. There used to be a burrito at our local gas station called The Bomb. And we would get it every weekend when we went and played a lot of video games back in high school for the night. And it was literally The Bomb because about eight hours later, 12 hours later, whatever it took, let's just say it didn't make it feel very good. So, oh, which vehicle am I taking? Do you guys care? Let's go check out some crops. I've got the Yoda. That is my pickup. And then over here, I've got the Fummins, freshly washed by leg arms before we fired him. So what do you guys think? Should I take the Yoda or the, or the Fummins? Yoda or Fummins? I'll watch a couple comments here. If we see Taco, <laughs> I don't know. The Ford, the Fummins, the Fummins? Yoda, Fummins, Yoda, Fummins. I wish I could do a poll. I know there's a way to do a poll, but I don't think I can do it right now. Yoda for sure. Uh, I've seen a bunch of Fummins. I don't know, guys. Fummins, 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 Ford, Fummins. Okay, whatever you can do a donut in. They do donuts. This one actually does donuts very well. Oh, I need that. I'm going to show you guys how hard the ground is. Let's take this with me. Might find some gold while we're at it, too. All right, I think people said the Fummins. We're taking the Fummins. Let's get the Fummins going. Put this back here. Perfect. Neither. What, do you want me to walk or something? My only downside is this uh, this uh, charging cable I'm using is kind of short. So I keep yanking on it. All right. We're in the Fummins. I just drove this thing earlier today, so it should be good to go. I got a couple super chats I'm going to hit right before we go. Uh, uh, Nexum Studios. Keep up, keep it up, guys. Thumbs up. Five bucks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very nice of you. Commando Bear, $10. Thank you, Commando Bear. All right. I'll show you guys what we're doing here when we fire this up. I'm uh, wearing awesome shorts, so uh, it's kind of warm out today. A whole sweaty 80 degrees outside. Yeah, we're not used to not used to heat up here. This has a 5.9 Cummins in it. A lot of you guys know that already. But for those that have not seen this truck, it's, uh, it is the Fummins. And it runs awesome. If I don't kill it, that is. There we go. It has a very touchy clutch in it. Very touchy. It's supposedly a pretty high performance clutch that engages uh, really quickly and it's supposed to last a long time. But the downside is, well, it jumps really bad. <clears throat> His leg arm's actually fired. Oh, well, we'll find out soon enough. I'm sure he'll come crawling back. He's always asking for a job. So we're, 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 we're working on him. I don't know. We'll fire him every other day. Maybe I'll teach him a lesson. But he did mention today about firing myself, so I don't know, maybe maybe this whole firing thing will backfire on me. No pun intended. <clears throat> what time is it? It's 8 o'clock my time right now. Hi right, guys, I haven't done a live stream in a while. This has been something I've been meaning to do for some time. But it just hasn't happened. But now that it's working, oh, make him an intern. That is a great idea. You don't have to pay interns, right? That's smart. He can intern the rest of the year. <laughs> we'll, we'll make that happen. Okay, so first up, let's uh, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Let's go check out some winter wheat. We'll go to winter wheat first. Oh, actually, you know what? I take that back. Let's not go all the way to the winter wheat. Cell service that way isn't that great. So we're going to check out the winter wheat right here. So let's uh, let's get out right here. So this is our last winter wheat field planted. This is also the closest to the farmyard and the, probably the best with cell coverage. So to make sure I have good cell coverage, I'm gonna go to this one. This one, we didn't spray for wild oats. There's a little bit of wild oats growing in. You can see it right here. See these oats? Don't like those, those are bad. But it wasn't a wreck and we did spray some of our spring wheat. 
but it looks like we probably should have went ahead and sprayed the, the wild oat spray on our winter wheat, but it'll be okay. Here's some broadleaf trying to grow through, some kochia right there. Fortunately, the canopy of the winter wheat is pretty good, so I think it's going to snuff out a lot of that broadleaf. It's trying. It's trying to grow through. You can see it right there and right there. <clears throat> so this here is winter wheat. For those that don't know what makes winter wheat significant, it's because we plant this. Let me change my hand here. Switch around. There we go. We plant this in the fall, typically end of September-ish, mid, mid to end of September, sometimes in October even, depending on the weather. It all depends on the weather. And what will happen is it will grow a little bit in the fall, and then it'll uh, basically go dormant through the winter. The root structure is still alive, but the plant up top typically dies. Sometimes it doesn't. Makes it through the winter, and then in the spring, it starts to grow again. But it's got a head start on everything else because it already has a root structure built. And by the time we're planting the spring wheat and our other crops, the winter wheat's already had a head start and it's growing well. So that is why, make sure it's wiped off. That's why we like winter wheat, because it yields typically better than all the other crops because it's got such a head start. <clears throat> the downside is winter wheat's not worth as much. It's uh, it's uh, worth typically, you know, if, if, if spring wheat's worth about $5 a bushel, let's just say winter wheat's worth like $4.70, $4.50 or something like that. But this year, winter wheat's actually pretty close to spring wheat. Spring wheat's not worth a whole lot. So it would be a good year to definitely be growing, growing winter wheat. But no, it's a it's a good. These look good. This winter wheat, I think, honestly, is going to do okay. I, I for a yield estimate on this field, I think it's going to be thirty five to forty bushel. I know that's like nothing for most <laughs> farmers and wetter areas, but for us, I have a suspicion it's going to run about that kind of yield. This is hard red winter wheat, correct? Yes, hard red. Just judging from the the the, the color of this crop and the size of some of these heads, like this little guy down here, that one's not going to get very far. See how tiny that thing is. Is this thing autofocus? There we go. Yeah, kind of kind of focuses. Um, I'm guessing this is going to be the first week of August. I think I think it's going to take the rest of this month. We've got some warmer weather coming. It's hard to see how long it's going to last, but I would suggest it's probably going to take to the end of the month. Protein levels on this really hard to say. I bet you we'll probably bring in a lot of tens. Typically, it seems like we get a lot of tens in our winter wheat. Uh, we might get eleven in some of it. Hard to say. We didn't put much nitrogen down. But I, 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 I bet you we're going to have some 10s, probably some 9s, somewhere in that area. You really want 11.5% 11 11 protein is the, the cutoff for protein. So anything under that, you get discounted. But you don't get discounted a lot in winter wheat, so it's not a huge deal to have lower protein. Let's go across the road to the other side, because the other side has spring wheat in it. And it was some of our first seeded spring wheat crops. Let's walk over here. What's up, guys? Having fun yet? Or is this boring? It's kind of kind of boring. All depends. Depends if uh if you just really have the urge to farm, then it's not very boring at all. Or if you're hungry, then it's not very boring either because uh this stuff makes really good donuts. So here on this side, let me flip the screen around for you. Here's our spring wheat. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Hardly any wild oats growing it. We did spray for wild oats. There's one right there that somehow made it through the spray. It could be resistant or it might have just gotten missed. But this field looks phenomenal. I mean, for, so far for spring wheat, it's looking really good. Here's the thing. We haven't had a rain, a rain in about three, three and a half weeks. The total rainfall for June was just under two inches of rainfall. July, we've had nothing. So this wheat here is working on only just a couple inches of rainfall in the past few weeks, and it's getting warmer. Our, the saving grace is it's been cool, cool and damp in the mornings, occasionally a little teeny shower, but there's a lot of this young growth that's coming up that's down low. And I don't think it's gonna be able to fill the heads fully. There's some really nice heads on these. I mean, look how long that baby is. It looks like, it looks like a 40 plus bushel spring wheat head right there. But what's gonna happen is when it got, finally goes to put kernels inside these heads, uh, it's going to run out of moisture. And when it runs out of moisture, it's only going to fill a few of them. And the ones that are going to be filled are going to be really tiny and shriveled. And that means it's going to be really difficult to thresh in the combine. And the yield's going to go way down. And that camera mic is right in my... Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Nice. That's a good spot for that. Right there. Perfect. <laughs> um, anyways, so it's going to be a crop 
it's really hard to say what it'll end up being. It has potential right now. If it got a rain right now, nothing in the forecast. But if it got something right now, it would wake it up. It would have, like if we got an inch of rain, this could go from being a 25 bushel spring rate crop to a 35 bushel spring rate crop pretty quick. You know, I don't know. I can't say it won't happen. Man, these are huge heads. Look at those things. Those things are really nice, really nice heads. So, hard to say, really hard to say what will come of this. But uh, the one on the bonus side is it will be probably pretty good protein because when it's stressed like this, it doesn't yield as well, but it does produce good protein. So I'm, it'll probably be pretty high quality spring wheat, minus being the test weight a little low. But other than that, um, you know, it's just, it's unfortunately, it's not, it's not the yields we were hoping for. We were really hoping, like everyone is, for that big crop. And a big crop for us would be, you know, 40 plus bushels an acre. With uh, winter wheat pushing 50 to 60, that would be amazing. So, but it's okay. The fact is we have a crop. We have a number of, uh, number of neighbors, a number of friends who've had complete hail wipeout. Uh, and the hail just decimated their farm. So some had good insurance, some didn't, but still, you never want that to happen. You never want to get hailed out. That's a terrible thing to happen. So we're not sitting in that boat. That's, that, that is the one blessing, uh, is we have a crop to cut. We're gonna get our combines going. It's just not gonna be quite as, uh, quite as uh, powerful or, or as yielding as we want it to be. Frost damage, no frost damage here. Um, the conditions have honestly been excellent growing conditions for for small grains and pulse crops, we've had just phenomenal growing conditions. Our peas have been able to flower in like literally 60 to 70 degree weather, like low 70s, high 60s for a month straight. I mean, that was that that's great. It's not like corn. The crops that we grow here aren't like corn where they need a lot of heat to grow. They really don't need a lot of heat. If we could keep it at 75 degrees maximum temperature all summer long, that would be that would be perfect for our crops. So I just pulled up next to our Quan set, we call it. Let me pull camera, switch camera view here so you can see what I'm talking about. You guys know this place. Looks familiar. Oh, yeah. How's the baby doing? Well, the baby's doing really good, as far as we know. The baby on the way. The, the, the older baby, Luke, he's doing really good. He's, uh, what is he, almost 10-some 10, 10 months now. So right now what we're looking at, guys, is our yellow peas. Yes, they don't look yellow right now. They are green. They're not that tall but they are looking really good on this field here. Let me uh, flip the cameras, get a better look at what I'm going through here. A couple weeds growing in them, but height wise, I mean, honestly, <laughs> these aren't that tall. I've seen a lot taller, but there's quite a few pods on them. Flip this over. Come on, autofocus, there we go. See the pods? Let's break that open. See if I can do it one-handed. Come on, focus. There we go. Now it's focusing. Oh, oh, come on. There, stay focused on it. So this one has, I'm trying to do this one-handed. This is actually quite difficult to do one-handed. See if I can keep splitting. Oh, I just dropped a pea. One, two, three, four. I dropped one, five. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I had seven peas in that pod. And they are very tasty, very tasty. They, uh, peas at this stage are delicious. I could eat them all day. You can actually, if you want, you can actually eat the pod too. Like that. Very sweet. But it's got a little bit of a fiber in it. So after a while, I just spit the shell out. <laughs> but if you guys have ever had peas fresh off the field or in your backyard, they're delicious. So, on the bright side, guys, we might have a new market for yellow peas. Right now, we can't really get rid of them. No one wants them right at the moment. But all those vegans out there, <laughs> bless their hearts, have created a market, and McDonald's, and I think Burger King, and a couple other uh, fast food joints are starting to produce patties made out of peas. They're vegan patties. I don't know. I'll probably try one, because why not? Why wouldn't you want to try one? I don't think. I, 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 prefer, I prefer my beef. But... Hey, if it opens up a market and someone wants to eat a pea patty in their burger because they don't want to eat any meat, that's great because it opens up a market for us. So it could make these things worth a little more, hopefully. We'll see how much that does. Anyways, just to keep that in mind, that could happen. But peas overall look pretty good. 
the nodulin in them. I've dug up some roots. Not a lot of nodulin going on anymore. I don't know why they died off. Maybe there's just not enough need for it at the per at the point, but um, we're we're pretty happy. The majority piece. But I'm gonna take you guys down the road, just over here, and I'm gonna show you something where it's not so good and we have issues. So let me uh, let me go through some of these comments real fast. A uh, homeless ghost, five bucks, should have bought a Silverado. I'm actually maybe considering one one of these days. I like Silverados. Good vehicle. Uh, Sean Roraback, ten bucks. How many miles on your Tacoma? Two hundred and ten thousand miles. So just barely broken, just barely. Uh, Paul 006, two bucks. Does any of your wheat go towards malt processes? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think any of our wheat does. Most of our wheat will go overseas to nations like uh, Japan, um, some of the Philippines, uh, Korea. It's mainly Asian Asian cultures that'll or Asian countries that'll be buying this stuff because we don't need this wheat here in America. There's enough of it produced. All right, I can't, I can't get enough of these peas. All right, those are good. I gotta pick some of these. So, anyways, no, it won't. It probably won't go to a malt here. It could potentially go to some overseas, but not here. But uh, it is, it is a good question though. And and I, you know, we've actually have, we just recently had a, a bus of uh, Japanese uh, commodity traders, and they stopped by our farm to check out some of our crops. Pretty cool. And they brought us some actual uh, pastries that are made, some candy, well, more like crackers, that are made in Japan. And they are actually pretty good. I like them a lot. But they said that, that those, uh, those uh, crackers that they have potentially are made from the very grain that came off this farm. So I think that's, that's pretty neat. Look at that sun right there. Isn't that a perfect shot? Is that, is that, is that blinding to you guys? <laughs> What's the difference between two drills? Uh, the two drills back there, not much. They're almost identical, except for one's a little newer than the other one, and one has a little bit bigger grain card on it than the other. But otherwise, they're about the same. Okay, let's keep moving on. And I think I have a couple more. Let's see here. Austin Pet, uh, Petit gave a buck. Thank you, Austin. You're the man. And uh, Sheldon Carson gave $10 Canadian. Maybe a silly question, but how do you measure a bushel? So guys, a bushel of grain, is roughly 60 pounds so for all of you metric guys out there i'm sorry to convert pounds into kilograms what is that let's see um is that like half isn't it like half or something is that 30 some kilograms anyways uh that's roughly what a measurement of a bushel is you go by weight not volume but i mean technically it is a volume there is a special area that they consider a bushel but for commodities, they typically just go by weight. So 60 pounds, we would consider a bushel. So a bushel of peas, 60 pounds, a bushel of wheat, 60 pounds. 27 kilograms, there you go, good job. So where I'm going right now is we're gonna walk down what is confusing us, and this is our pea crop. And you'll be able to see here a distinct line on the quality of our pea field. And something happened, we're pretty sure it was a, a chemical damage done. The chemical we used was sulfentrazone, and or at least that's the active ingredient in it. And it's typically a really, really great product. It helps keep the broadleaves from growing in your peas. You spray it after you seed, the peas come through just fine, theoretically, and the weeds die. But something happened here. Let me stand back. Stand back so you guys can see this. I'll zoom in on it. Maybe you guys can spot this. But about a third, if not a quarter, of all of our crops, they're damaged. And you could see the, see the color difference. I don't know, this camera's probably not picking up very well. Pretty light and kind of weird splotchy and blotches on this side. And then on this side, it's lush and green and taller. Not a very good view through this live stream. So, but I'll walk out there. I'll show you kind of what we're looking at. And a lot of our pea fields, some of them are pretty bad. Better grab some more peas. There we go. Uh, it's really discouraging, actually. I'll show you, this isn't the worst field. But just something happened when I sprayed them. And I don't know. It could be operator error. It could be me. I might have mixed the chemical incorrectly and over-applicated this. It could be the sprayer was malfunctioning and over-applicating, even though I set it to the correct rate. I remember looking at it and everything and being pretty on top of that. Or it could be a bad batch of chemical that wasn't, uh, you know, was more, more, more potent than it should have been. You can see we walked out of here a few times. We got a bunch of peas knocked over because... It's a, but the weirdest part is in this field, 
It's never had peas in it before, but there's a distinct line right here. Perfect line, definitely a spray line. Where this side's good, that side's not good. And I just don't know what it is. Same fertilizer rate on both sides, seeded the same time, sprayed the same time. This is a normal field. There's never been a line here in this field before with our wheat or any other crops. We never had any chemicals sprayed on this field that are dangerous for peas that have residual. Hey, sorry, eating, eating more peas. Man, these things are good. <sighs> so, but let's take a look here, okay? On this side, pretty tall, pretty lush, looking like a good 25 bushel pea crop right here. Okay, that's considered pretty good for us. On this side, you can look and see how yellow, yellow the stems are. Like this one here, already yellowing up. Some of these only have one pod per plant, like this one. Should have about seven, seven, eight pods per plant. There's only one on that. Only one. Something stunted it. Something prevented that plant from being able to mature like it should have. And like right over here, where I was turning around or something, where the sprayer put a little more dose on, I mean, it's, it is thin. I mean, it thinned it out to almost nothing growing. So, I, conclusion is it's definitely chemical related. The question is why. I don't know if we'll ever fully know, but we just hope that next year we do it a little differently. See how thin this is in here? Now this right here, this is actually wild oats that was growing in this field. And we hit that with a clethogen, what it's called, and clethogen is amazing. And it killed the wild oats, which that's the, this right here is the damage done by the wild oats. There uh, would be peas growing here, but the wild oats came in so strong, it choked out the peas that were growing through. And, uh, but by the time we sprayed it and killed the wild oats, the damage was already done. But it just looks splotchy and it's not very good. So, anyways, I'll drive by some, let me switch this camera around, I'm having a hard time here. I'll drive by, um, I'll drive by uh, another field that's even worse than this one. And you'll be able to see more. It's gonna be a bummer because we're gonna have to cut really low to the ground. I mean, we're gonna practically have to drag our headers because like some of these pods are only like five inches off the ground. So it's gonna be like cutting lentils. Fortunately, these fields have been rolled with a land roller and uh, our draper headers are pretty good float. Pulls go slow, but you hate to do that. We don't have flex heads on our combines. So it takes a little bit of a, a little bit of a effort to pick them up, but we'll get as many as we can. And honestly, ruling's out, who knows? Maybe it'll yield more than we think. I mean, maybe it'll come in with only 20% loss instead of 50 or 15%, you know, compared to our good stuff. Look at those little guys. Word of advice though, don't try to eat these things after they've dried out. It's like chewing on marbles. You will break your teeth. So, I should read some of your comments. Nick, how am I doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Mike. Doing really good. Life is great, except for my nice white shoes. Look at that. I'm gonna have to scrub that off tonight. I wore these shoes because they're so comfortable, but they are not very good shoes to own on a farm and walk through a green crop field with. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a very smart choice. I'm doing really good, guys. I appreciate your support. It's been awesome. YouTube channel's just been screaming. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. I'm, uh, I'm loving what's going on. Got a lot of fun content coming. I think you guys are gonna be, you're gonna be loving what's coming in the next few weeks, especially when harvest starts. It's just gonna be a blast. We got some surprises coming. Life's just really good, you know? Our crops are not where we want them to be. Prices are definitely not where we want them to be. Farming in general looks pretty bleak right now. It's actually not a very, uh, <laughs> it might look like farming's great, but right now, honestly, the amount of farms that are foreclosing, banks are taking over, having to sell, it's, it's just not a lot of money being made right now. And it needs to change and hopefully change soon because uh, it can't go on forever like this. But we're sitting in a place right now where we're, we're doing okay. And it's not a, uh, it's not, we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have a crop. We're gonna have bins full. We still got a bunch of leftover product from last year. I say product, I should say crops. I gotta drive to the field here because uh, that's the only way to turn around here. Uh, this truck is not very good at turning around, let me tell you that right now. Long wheelbase. Okay, so let's uh, get that camera out of my face. Do you have enough water to irrigate in Montana? Yes, we, okay, we don't. A lot of Montana does. Uh, there's a lot of irrigation in Montana. There's some very fertile land in Montana. I feel 
I feel like I might be giving Montana a bad rep in general. We live in a dry area. Montana has lots of, it's a big state. And the rear view mirror is right by us. <laughs> it's a big state, guys. So what's happening right now on Welker Farms does not represent the entirety of Montana. There's parts of Montana that are doing great. I mean, like, great. Like, there's parts of Montana that can push 100 bushel dry land wheat and over 100 bushel dry land barley. So even though the part of Montana we live in is pretty dry, it's typically pretty dry, don't consider that all of Montana. I know a number of farms that if they cut a 60 bushel wheat crop, that's a bad year for them. So, and there's actually parts of Montana that, that grow corn too. And not nearly at the scale of corn grown back east. But it's a it's a it's a shorter corn, but they still grow. I, I think hundred I think I've heard 130, 140 40 bushel dryland corn here. So I mean it's it's definitely a doable thing. Uh, do I like how farms work? I do like how farms work. I think Ryan's a great guy. I think he's got a great channel. He's been around a long time. Long time. So yeah, I really like how farms work. I think uh, I think highly of his channel. Definitely. Where is leg arm? He's not with me. He's at home probably hanging out with his kids, like I probably should be doing. Uh, and I see there's a couple more Super Chats, guys, I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, Sheldon Carson, $10. Maybe a silly question. Oh, I already did that one. Okay, I already got that one, yeah. That's good, that's good. Uh, Nicole Slogga? Slogga. A dollar, thank you. Really appreciate it. Let's head up north. I'm going to show you guys, uh, I'm going to show you guys that field that we use the disc drill on. We'll head up there, and then, uh, Check out that with the precision disc drill versus the hoe drill. I'll show you a field that we accidentally planted 95 pounds of seed on per acre. We well, were only supposed to put about 70. That's not good. It really is not good to do that. <laughs> Unless you get a lot of rain and put a lot of fertilizer down, but we didn't, so. And it's okay to it's okay to stream and drive, right? Just not text and drive. I think it's something like that. Here's what it looks like going down the road. Put it down here. It's 30 psi pretty quick. Pretty quick. All right, your roads. I think it matters. These are not our roads. They're technically county roads. I like to consider them our roads because we're pretty much live on them. But no, they're not our roads. They're they're definitely county roads. County's been doing a pretty good job of maintaining this year. We really appreciate that. Do a burnout! Uh, the big bud also, guys, is not done yet. It's still sitting in the shop. I think it's gonna sit there for a while longer till we're gonna have to finish harvest. That's the only way. Do you like Harmless Farmer? I do like Harmless Farmer. That's Harmless Farmer's name is Andy. And Andy is an inspirational guy. He's had quite the quite the challenge in life. Uh, being uh, having to grow up without any arms. And the mouth, the things that that man can do with his feet, it just goes to show that, you know, nothing's impossible. <laughs> I, I, I really admire him. So, yeah, Andy's a good guy. Um, what's your favorite harvest? Harvest? What's your favorite? Harvest? Harvest is definitely my favorite. Uh, how stronger is leg arms over Hollywood? I would say leg arms are stronger than me right now, definitely. He's got a lot more muscle mass on me than, than I do right now. I used to be stronger than him for a long time. But I've let my uh, my strength slip over the years, and I'm not nearly where I used to be. And he's, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's looking pretty good. This is our lakes that we have here. They're slowly drying up, and they're getting really nasty because uh, because the water here has been evaporated and hasn't been recharged with any rain. So the birds have been doing a number to it, and it's starting to really stink. I, I, at this rate, I think it probably will be dry by the end of the year, which typically we don't have water in these anyway, so that wouldn't be that big of a surprise. But, um, let's see here. Let me get up here. And I'll get out. Build a little boost. There's some of our peas over here looking pretty good on that side. On this side, we've got some of our youngest spring wheat. This stuff's going to get hurt because it's not as far along as the rest of the spring wheat, so it's going to be damaged a little bit, which is too bad because this is the disc drill 
the field that we had that disc drill in that we ran up against that hoe drill. So I don't know how good the test is going to be now that it's kind of droughting, but I guess if you want to see a drought test, you'll be able to tell that. So here we are. All right, let's get out. Hang on a second real quick. I got to grab some peas while I'm at it. The wheat's not ready to chew on yet, so uh, let me steal some of our peas over here. Oh, some of these are pretty thin. That's a pretty thin shell. See, that one's got no pods in it, or yeah, any any um, peas in it. Any peas in the pod yet. Or the nice thick one. That one's not bad. I'll take that one. And that one. Okay. All right, we're set. Let's go back to the other side. Ooh, that one was tasty. Okay. So, where is the line at? Let's see here. Oh, I think it's over here. Is it? I'm looking. I think it's right there. Yeah, this has got to be it. Okay, let's walk out here. Yummy. All right. Going down the field. The difference is it's getting to be less and less between the two drills. At least to my eyes, but we'll see closer here in a second. On the left side, we have the 5000 series flex coil 57 foot hoe drill with uh, three and a half inch openers, nine inch spacing. And on the right side, we've got the 500 DS case IH disc drill, precision disc drill. Height wise, down the whole thing. Hard to say. I mean, this is kind of a tough edge here. They were seeded, supposed at the same rate, at the same fertilizer rate. This line right here, for some reason, isn't doing as well. This very edge right here, but this edge is doing really good. So I can't really compare those because if I look over a little more, the height of this is really similar to the height of that. Um, as far as the stand, looks pretty good. I mean, honestly, that's pretty tough to tell. It really is. It's it's really tough to tell the difference between these two. I think uh, I think it's going to be one of those deals where the real comparison is going to be when it comes down to yield in the combine, and just see if we have much yield difference between the two sides. So with these new combines we got, they've got some pretty nice yield monitors in them, and we're going to we're going to definitely keep tabs on that and see. But I'm just looking for anything like any any smaller short wheat heads that haven't uh, shot up as far, and on both sides it looks pretty consistent. I will say the disc drill is much nicer to run, and you get a lot more acres done. So as far as actual machine goes, the disc drill is awesome. As far as yield difference on either side i don't know it'd be really close we'll see we'll see how it goes let's we'll stay tuned on that one but i thought i'd stop by and at least take a look at it in western australia you'd be lucky to get 30 bushels per acre see that's more like us that's more like us so i think we're a little better than that we, we can get over 30 quite often so i'm i'm so sorry for those guys down under they've got that kind of farming down there is is that's tough that's tough all right there's a reason why they have fifty thousand acre farms over there i guess or thirty thousand hectare farms those you have to to survive there it takes a lot of acres to make a living all right let's head back to the truck catch some of your comments how many acres of uh winter wheat do we have we have a thousand acres of winter wheat in this year so not a lot not a lot definitely some um ohio millennial farmer omf finished wheat nice good for you that's good to hear. <laughs> it's the dingoes. <laughs> the dingoes. Calgary Stampede. Is that going on right now? I have to admit something. I've never been to the Calgary Stampede. I've never been to it. And I really should get up there and go to that thing. I hear a lot of really good things about the Calgary Stampede. It just seems like we're always getting pretty busy about farming around that time. And I just have never done it. I feel bad even saying that. It's pretty much just Calgary Stampede's only, only like four hours from us here which isn't that far. That's just like a little bit, a little jot across the country into another country, I guess. But yeah, I need to get to that. Great videos, thank you. There's a lot of cool videos coming, guys. 
I hope you guys are enjoying the editors that I have editing for me. They do a really good job. I'm really thankful for them. And uh, Modi Services, they, uh, they, they do a really good job. Very happy for them and have them on team. They help me out a lot in a lot of other ways too. So we're making, making progress there. Drew says, Real Copper, yes he does. Okay, I saw Drew in the house. Uh, Luke Strasser, 20 bucks. Hi from Japan, oh man. One second, let's pull up Drew here. Or, oops. And uh, thanks for the three bucks, uh, Ben Gara, the 30 bushels per acre guy, let's see here. Uh, Cassie Blackburn, two bucks. Blackburn, two bucks. How far is the movie theater and cost for your farm? Uh, the movie theater is only about two miles from our farm, really. It's actually not that far. It's uh, it's an older theater. It's been updated a little bit, but unfortunately, it's I don't think it's doing very well, and not a lot of people go to the movies these days. So there's a good chance it's uh, I don't know. I hope it sticks around a while. I don't go very often. That's one reason why it's not doing very well. Uh, just not a lot of movies these days. I want to go see. It's not like I used to. All right, let's stop right up here. I want to show you guys this field. This field we kind of made a mistake on, and we seeded like 30 some percent more seed than we normally do. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how it turns out. Okay, so Luke Strauss, or, uh, 20 bucks, wow, thank you, Luke. Hi, Nick from Japan. I have a US, Montana, and a US, Montana, and US Navy flag with me to fly on board the Navy P8A P -8 -A on a mission in the next week. Hope to have them in your time to fly during harvest. That would be amazing. I will do that. Luke, if you send me those flags, I'll put them on the combines for you. I'll get them up there. Try to take care of them. I still gotta get the brackets made, but definitely, Luke, if you want to send them my way, um, I'll put them on. I'll put them on for you. Definitely. Oh man, AC Blackburn just gave a hundred bucks. Wow. Go spend some time with your family and see a movie. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hundred bucks. <laughs> Thank you. Well, maybe I'll do that. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you what the plan is, guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna go spend time with my family. And I'm going to go spend it at Maelstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls, Montana. The reason I'm going to Maelstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls, Montana tomorrow is because it's an open base to civilians. It's the first time they've done it in a long time, in like well over a decade. And F-22 Raptors are coming in to fly for an air show. I mean, seriously, F-22 Raptors. I've never seen one other than maybe once I thought I saw one fly across the sky. I could kind of see the after or the, the uh, thrust vectoring on the backside of it. So I'm pretty sure it was an F-22. But I have never seen one in person that close. They're going to do an air show. I cannot wait. So I'm going to that tomorrow. So I'll take that money, and I'm going to go and buy my kids some slushies, and we're going to go watch some jets do some crazy maneuvers in the air. That airplane's amazing. I love the F-22. And I might live stream it. I'm actually thinking about doing that. That or record it. I think cameras are going to be allowed. I don't see why they wouldn't be. We'll see if they do. I don't know why they wouldn't. And uh, I'll show it. So, yeah. You guys might see me. If you're in Great Falls, I might be there tomorrow. And C-130s. Check out a C-130. Yep, yeah, there will be C-130s there, too. I should do that. Okay. All right. Back to farming. And again, thank you. Thank you, Casey. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you. This field right here. Okay. Crop tour. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do, right? If I can change my camera. Come on. There we go. All right. <clears throat> this field right here has a lot of tire tracks in it. There's a reason for that because I sprayed. I drove over it twice with Big Brute. So the same track. So Big Brute tracks are very apparent because I sprayed a a type of liquid uh, fertilizer on it um, from uh, Stoller, and it's a bit of bioforge and some other uh, harvest, I forget what the other the micronutrient is, the bioforge or something else. Anyways, I was hoping it would help because this field got seeded at almost 100 pounds an acre spring wheat, and it's going to burn. If it doesn't, I would be so surprised. It looks good right now. It's a little short. But it's running out of moisture. It's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see how it finally yields out. But I bet you it's gonna have really small kernels. That's my prediction. So if you guys hear me right now, we'll check this when we harvest it in a few weeks. This could be actually the middle of August, probably. But uh, it's probably gonna be really shriveled little kernels. But I bet you the protein is gonna be really high. I'm just guessing. I bet it's gonna push 15, 16 protein in this field. We'll see though. We'll see. Hard to say. I. I. I it's just really hard to say. Maybe it'll yield a lot better than we think, and maybe that's what we'll do from here on out. You need that precision planter. I know. That'd be amazing. I really do like that. Calgary Stampede, next year, July 3rd through 12th. Oh, so it's today the last day. Oh, maybe I won't be able to make the Calgary Stampede. Love your map of farming simulator. Thank you. What is our biggest field? Biggest field this year? 
Uh, 300 acres. We didn't do any real mass of fields this year. We didn't block anything in. 300 is a pretty typical for the big fields on our farm. We have had blocked in an area, made it like a 600 acre field. That'd be about the biggest, but yeah, I think 300 is about the size of our field this year, the biggest field. So anyways, guys, this field right here, I, I guess it probably doesn't look that different through a live stream camera. It's definitely thicker. You can definitely see big brute tire tracks in there, but that's just because I drove over that spot twice. If it was only one time, which I'm gonna jump over this field and show you big brute tire tracks. This one only had the brute drive over it once. So you'll be able to see a little different in the tire tracks. See if you guys can spot them. I'm sure you'll be able to. Let me flip to this one. Beautiful evening today, beautiful evening. Very light and variable wind and uh, a lot of clover and alfalfa growing. These buds are kind of fun to eat. If you've ever eaten them, they're kind of sweet. It seems like I eat everything on the farm. Here's some of our beautiful uh, field rock. See all that lichen and other stuff growing on there? I think it's lichen. This stuff is gorgeous. This is what the rocks turn to be like in, uh, in, in this area of Montana when they sit for a while outside. These have been picked from the fields over the years and they just, every color, shape and size for rock walls, for kind of rock landscaping. This stuff would be worth a fortune if I could get it to like California or back in New York or somewhere. We would be absolute filthy, filthy rich, but it would be so expensive to haul this stuff that far that it's not worth it. I don't have to be filthy rich, but I think people would honestly want this stuff. You could take it intact without breaking all that lichen off. There's some big boulders and things that'd be worth a lot of money. It'd be really cool. People like that stuff for their yards. I do. Adam uh, Poirier. One dollar. Thank you, Adam. Really appreciate it. Another Adam for another buck. Two bucks. Thank you, Adam. Okay, right here. So, that right there is brute tire tracks. I don't know what I was doing there. I think, oh, I was turning around. I pulled in like this, spun around, came back, came over, and then went down to the end pass. There's brute tracks right here. That's typically what it looks like. So you could see a little bit of damage in the crop, but not too bad. The Apache, on the other hand, actually has lines. You can see the lines pretty well. So, um, I went to high school in Thompson Falls. That's awesome. I love Thompson Falls. Logan, Logan says he went to high school in Thompson Falls. I used to go there every summer, every summer to Knoxon Reservoir. We have family that have cabins on that lake. And that was some of the best childhood memories I've ever had. I love that place. It's been a while since I've been there. We were actually kind of hoping to maybe make a, our time over there this year and hang out in that area. Thompson Falls is a nice little town. I, I, I do. I do like that area. It's beautiful. It was on fire the last couple of years. And it was kind of scary, but pretty beautiful. Oh, hey, look what I found. You guys see it? What is that? Right there. It's a present, actually. It's a present from someone who gave us a TV. It's a true flat. Thank you, whoever you are. I really wanted this right here. That's perfect. I mean, who else wouldn't want a TV in the ditch up here? They probably brought it out here and shot it with a bunch of guns and dropped it, left it in the ditch. It's too bad. You know, I've, uh, I've done my share of smashing TVs and breaking them, but we always picked them up afterwards and uh, threw them away. It shouldn't be my responsibility to have to pick up other people's garbage. No, I do. Especially when I get couches and, and mattresses and other stuff too, tossing the ditches around the fields. A lot of times I just grab them and I just go take them to the dump and throw them out. But yeah, that's not all the time, but that's funny. I think I, I've actually never walked to that TV. I saw it there uh, I think last year. I drove by and saw that thing, but <laughs> that's funny. It was probably one of you. I know you're laughing right now. Maybe one of these days I'll grab it, throw it in the pickup, and take it to the landfill. Maybe. When I feel good. All right. What else do we have? Uh, Nick, may I ask something? You sure may. Feel free to ask me something while we drive back to the farm. Uh, do a burnout. I could try to do one, but it's not going to really look very cool because, uh, well, I'm in here, so all you're going to see me is doing this with a big smile on my face and lots of engine sounds. One hand starts this thing. Okay. Um... What do you think of One Lonely Farmer? Uh, Wes? I like Wes. He's been around a long time. Wes has had a YouTube channel for quite some time. He's got a lot of videos on YouTube. Wes has pretty amazing hay operation too. 
and uh, he's also pretty mechanical. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed with his ability to, to fix and work on things. So yeah, Wes, Wes is a, he's a very talented guy. Um, is this still live? Yes, it is still live. I am still reading the comments. And the mosquitoes are not bad. This year, the mosquitoes have been excellent. It's weird, they come in flushes like that. And this year, they've been very good, very good. I have nothing to complain about. I can try to at least show you guys a mirror. Maybe you can see the mirror. Okay. Watch right there. That wasn't that much. Let's slow down a little bit. Nah, she's not smoking real hard today. I'm going downhill. That doesn't help. All right. <laughs> Okay, we're moving. Finished my cornfield, nice, faster. The mosquitoes, yeah, mosquitoes are terrible. I hate mosquitoes. I absolutely hate mosquitoes. But fortunately, they've been really good this year. Haven't been much. This truck is awesome. I do really like this truck. When it gets about that 2,500 RPM, it just screams. It's amazing. One of your first videos, you were flying an airplane, do you Keep up your pilot's license. MM Millennial Farmer said the other day that his, uh, da, 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 da. he was a, uh, so, you know, pilot's license. Yes. I, uh, I am a pilot. Um, I've been a pilot since 2006, I think is when I got my pilot's license. I'm just a private pilot. I've only got about 130 hours, something like that. Not a lot of time. I've just flown a couple, mainly 172 Cessnas, 150, two. Uh, I've been in 182, I've been in a Diamond VA42, I've been in a Plotus PC12, but that's the only thing that I've about got time on. Just a little teeny bit in that Plotus. That was that was awesome. I, that was a fun experience sitting in that thing. But no, I'm, I'm not current. I'm not current with my license. Um, I decided to stop keeping it current because I wasn't flying enough to make it worth the money of having the license. I was spending you know 500 to 1,000 dollars a year on an airplane license and flying that I'd only do two to three times a year max, and it was just a buzz of farm. So I've kind of come to the conclusion that right now I'm, I'm better off just, uh, I'm better off just waiting. I'll, I'll probably get my pilot's license soon again, or get it current again and, and get my medical back. I think, I actually think my medical hasn't expired yet. So, but yeah, flying is, uh, flying's a blast. I love flying. It's, it's, it's well worth it. If you've got the money, it's well worth it. That's why I quit doing it was I just figured it's not worth the money. All right, what do we all? Uh, really, thank you, uh, farmers. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, love the videos. Can't wait for the next one. Love farming some Is the video coming out tomorrow, guys? I will have it out probably, hopefully first thing in the morning if it all goes well. If you're a patron, I'm hoping to get it out tonight. We'll see when it's finished. I haven't quite gotten it yet, so when it comes out, I'll get that. I'll get that up. Um, but anyways, the video tomorrow. Content this week wasn't super great. It was a little slow. We had a lot going on this week, but it wasn't a lot of farming and a lot of stuff we were doing. I couldn't film. So I didn't have a lot of footage for tomorrow, so it'll be a shorter video, which is okay, because I don't have those very often. I've been averaging like 20 some minute videos. So yeah, don't expect tomorrow's video to be anything crazy, but it's gonna be fun. I think you'll enjoy it. It's got a couple fun stuff in it. And then starting next week, I think the videos are gonna be awesome. Here on out, we're gonna have great content. Great content, a lot's gonna be happening, a lot of work to do, and it's just gonna be a steam train, man. Throwing the coal in, and once harvest starts, it's gonna be full bore, full bore for a couple weeks, so. Big combines, really big combines. Big trucks, 9370 is gonna be on the farm. You guys are gonna see the International rolling. It's uh, having a little bit of engine work done to it right now. We found out there was a problem with the injection pump and they're fixing that. So it'll come back with even more horsepower than it had. So we can't wait. It's gonna be, it's gonna purr, absolute purr. So stay tuned for that. We're heading back, Calgary Stampede. Guys, a bunch of people are out to Calgary Stampede or at least going there, that's awesome, that's good. We're just cruising down the road here. No, no one in front of us, no one behind us. That's our peas on the right. I do want to pull into this field here to show you guys just how bad. Actually, I'll, I'll go to the other side. We'll show you that's like. Um, Nick, this is live. Can't believe my God says thanks, squad. Is this, a, is this the real squad? Man, I haven't talked to you guys in a while. What is happening, squad? You guys are at like, uh, if that's the real squad, you guys are at like, uh, like, what are you, are you 600 some thousand subscribers now on YouTube? That's huge. 
That is huge. I, I'm gonna get there someday. I'll be behind you a little ways, but I'll get there. That's awesome. You guys, you guys are kicking butt on YouTube. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. Oh, oh, vehicle, vehicle, vehicle. Look, see that right there? We've, we've got, we've got traffic on the road. Traffic. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in these situations. Should I, should I pull off the road? Should I, should I slam on the brakes? Got to do the hand wave, steering wheel hand wave. Okay, let's go over to Big Brew real quick. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. I'll show you what our our sickly peas look like. There's the brood, just hanging out. That's gonna be our fire truck for harvest. Believe it or not, guys, that is gonna be our fire truck for harvest. So we keep him out, we fill him up, 1,650 gallons of water, pump on it. It's gonna have nozzles that'll spray out the side so you can drive along the fire if we have one in the fields. It's also gonna have a long hose on it so if you need to climb up on the combine and spray it down or whatever may happen. So yeah, the brute, the brute is definitely gonna be in harvest, but he's mainly just gonna sit in a field and wait until we move to the next field. And hopefully we don't have to use him for a fire truck. We used to use this old truck over here for a fire truck, but it's kind of gutless. Doesn't have a lot of power with a full 2,000 gallons on it. It's slow to the fire. It's low. I'm just nervous about that thing. If for whatever reason it quit in a fire, field fire, I just don't know if I'd trust that much. And it's kind of a pain to get out and start the gas engine and spray water. So let's go in here. This is what our sickly peas look like. This area's a little hard here, so because the ground's tough because we park equipment here. Now let's walk out on this. These peas should be about twice the height. And they're just they're just thin they're thin they don't look very good i just don't know what is going on and it's just kind of a bummer because uh something happened something happened with these things and it's of course the field right next to the farm right Ooh, perfect that's a nice full pot right there the one thing i do notice about these peas even though they're short they sure pot it out quicker than everything else we can get that to focus on it there we go look at that pea Isn't that awesome oh come on there we go Mm, that's good pee. Anyways, so this stuff here, it's just not very good. Let's get down in it. Show you a little bit what we're looking like. See all that nasty yellowing? The plants are drying up. That is normal to an extent, but it's happening too soon. A lot of these only had a couple flowers on them. I don't know. Verdict's out how it's going to yield. Really uneven. See how it's not flush? Should just be a nice canopy across the whole thing. You can see the tire tracks really well. Some, some weird happened with that. I wish I knew, uh, I knew what, but, um, Cody Barnum, $2. What's your best guess with the peas? My best guess is I think this field here is going to yield about 15 bushels an acre. I could be wrong on that. And I really hope I am, but I think it's going to be about 15. I think our good peas are going to be 25, 20 to 25, somewhere in that area. They've had such cool weather. The conditions have been perfect for peas the last few weeks while they've been flowering. That's critical that it's cool weather while they're flowering. They produce a lot of pods. They're filling the pods out. It's surprising how many pods are filling out. I mean, they're getting the peas are being made. So I, I, I think we're gonna be surprised, honestly. But this one, on the other hand, maybe I don't know. Maybe having this having chemical damage is a good thing if it's not gonna rain because it might actually. Uh, it might actually have more a chance to put more effort into the pods that it grows instead of all the plant material that it would try to grow. Like the other stuff did. Hmm. You guys want some of this? I could I could share some. It's good. Sun's getting lower. Beautiful. Beautiful Montana sky. We'll walk back over this way. I'll leave the fummins there. He can hang out. Oop. Leave the fummins right there. There's the fummins. Let's walk back to the shop. And then uh, I'm just about an hour in, so I can end the stream. Brood's still looking really good. Look at that guy. I still got to put a big mud flap on the back of him. Haven't done that yet. It's in the list of things to do to him. Got to get a bunch of water in the water truck. We'll have this thing full during harvest. So that way, let me hold the camera steady. There we go. So that way we have uh, 5,000 gallons of water with a three-inch pump ready to go. So if we need to quickly fill up, we can get back out to the field. Our 8230s are just begging to get in the field. They can't wait. I can't wait to run these things. You know, we did that golf tournament, guys, to see who gets to run the 8230, the Beast Vine, with those 
massive LSW 1400 tires. And he'll get to drive it too. It was kind of a joke, really. I'll run it quite a bit though, but we're gonna take turns. We're gonna take turns running this beast. Just look at that thing. Look at those tires. Is that is that a little overkill, perhaps? I've had a number of people say, watch out for your final drives because uh, those big tires are gonna destroy your final drives. I went on the internet, I don't know. I did a lot of searching. I'm sure you guys probably maybe have heard stories, but I haven't found a lot of a lot of forums or times where people have said they've lost their final drives on these things, even with big tires or the axles. I think, from my understanding, Case Case did a pretty good job engineering the the axles on these things and the way they're driving, and uh, not a common thing to have go out. Obviously, a big tire like that's going to probably put a little stress on it, but we're going to take it easy. We're not going to push it too hard. But I mean, honestly, you have a 2,700 pound almost 3,000 pound tire right there. And then over here, you've got 620s. And if you take all the rubber from the sidewalls, like imagine taking this rubber right here, okay? Folding it up, taking this rubber on the sidewall here, folding it up, you have one whole tire. So you already have probably as much, almost as much rubber here as in those tires. They are taller, they are bigger diameter. And then you have all this extra steel here for the inside of these rims, these wheel wells. So I think personally, you're not a lot heavier and a lot more stress on the final drive on a dual setup versus a single, but that's my thoughts. I, I'm, I'm saying there definitely is a difference, but it's not, I think it's as significant as people may think. So run the big bud. Okay, well there's two big buds over here. I'll show you them real quick. They're hanging out inside the shop over here. And then I'll show you where the other, the other uh, big bud is. He's hanging out in the shop. So right in here, we've got the Apache. We've got the little bud right here and the 525 behind the Apache right there. Of course, my dad's Duramax right there. And, oops, go back to this one. We'll uh, say goodbye to the Beast Mine and his little brother. I don't know what to name that one yet. Big Red, maybe? You could name him, uh, uh, what's the name of that dog? Clifford, we'll have Clifford and Beast Mine. How about that, Clifford and Beast Mine? Yoda's a little sad because I didn't take him. It's okay. We'll get some attention eventually here. It's a good pickup. Got a little bit of work to do our grain deck. You guys will see that in a future video. Hopefully the live stream doesn't kick off here. But here's the 525 hanging out. Hasn't changed much. Just hanging tight. We haven't done hardly anything to him. About the same old tractor. Just, uh, just uh, sitting tight waiting for us to come and give it a little love. So it will get some time. We're gonna finish this tractor. It's just gonna to have to be after harvest, but we will get in we will finish it and it's gonna be a beast. And if we're, if we're done in time and everything works out, it'll be seeding some winter wheat this fall. That's what, that's what we're kind of shooting for, hopefully. Hopefully that works out, we'll see how it goes. But that's the goal, but beautiful tractor. And it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be beautiful. When it's done, it's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna be one of those tractors we'll just keep inside as much as we possibly can. That's the goal with everything. The downside this year is we're gonna be short on space again because we didn't sell a lot of last year's crops. So we have, uh, <laughs> we've got not a lot of space on the farm. So I, I'm really hoping that we don't have to put any grain in that building over there. Really hoping. And then if all this works out, we'll be able to get a building put up soon. And if we can finance it, make sure it works, and we can afford it, I should say. But if we can get a, if we can afford it, we'd like to get a couple grain bins put up in a building. That's that's definitely on our priority right now because that has to be done. So I'm gonna sit in my beast bind wheel well here. This spot right here. Ah, there we go. I can sit upright without having to hit my head. I'm gonna talk to you guys for a minute. So let's answer some questions. Um, do you make your farming simulator 19 or other people? I don't make it. No. Uh, Mapper's Paradise. Mapper's Paradise is a uh, modding group and they make it and they do a great job and they're making the mm millennial map as well so stay tuned for that nice chair it is it actually sounds really good kind of have this weird echo echo sound when you're in here man you can really get inside this thing crazy um any thoughts on united states usmca i'm not sure what usmca actually is so i would say uh give an answer on that wow it's dark it is getting dark now guys it's probably really dark where you're at are you rebuilding um, your computer with a new AMD CPU and GPU? Ah, oh, you got it. 
I've been watching Linus Tech Tips. I can't wait. I, I don't know, guys. I probably won't upgrade my 1700X AMD for probably a little while for all you computer nerds out there. Uh, only reason being is I don't need to, but I really do want the new Ryzen 3850. Is that what it is? 3850, 3870? That Ryzen 3 AMD CPUs, they, they knocked out of the park. I mean, when it's within a few percentage points of AMD's top gaming processor, but yet it just dominates multitasking, multi-core applications, it's it's amazing. So, yeah, I would really like to. I probably have to get a new motherboard. Um, I don't know if my motherboard can support it. And as far as Navi goes, I'm a little disappointed with AMD's GPU, but I think uh, they're making good progress, and I know they're working on something pretty sweet. So we'll see what happens. But AMD always seems to be a little bit behind in the GPU market than NVIDIA. So there's my tech tips. But yeah, Linus Tech Tips, guys. If you guys want to be a little tech, you learn a couple things. He's got a great YouTube channel. I'd love to meet the guy sometimes. He's pretty smart. Absolutely blows anything that I might think I know out of the water. Been flying lately? Nope, no flying. Flying the drone lately, though. Yes, I flew the drone today. Got some good footage of leg arms driving. The Fummins. Um, when are we going to get the 1150 running? <laughs> uh, probably not for a long time. We'll see what happens with that tractor. I don't know. It really, really is out on that thing. Can you start the case? Why would I want to start it? He's sleeping. Don't want to start him. He's, he's, just, he's just hanging out. How many acres of spring wheat do we have? We have uh, five, six, a little over 4,000 acres of spring wheat, somewhere in that area. A little over 4,000. Um, your mother's short should support Gen 3. I think it should. I think my motherboard's a 370. I think it's X370. I don't think I got the 4. So it just won't have um, PCI Express 4.0, right? I think it's only got 3.0. So I can't do that, uh, the super fast memory. But from my understanding is those things get really hot if you do plug an SSD into that. It like, gets super hot at those speeds. So, yeah. Um, you should get a bush plane and you can land right there. That would be nice. A nice uh, Piper Cub. Piper Cub with some huge floaters on it. Yeah, like these babies. So much to make an airplane with LSWs on them. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, da, 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 da. What do you use to pick your beans? Um, we use just a regular draper head. A uh, 45-foot draper head will get them. It works pretty good. He finally answered a question. I know, guys. I was, like, doing my own thing there. I'm trying to get in a habit of doing the live stream and then coming back to you guys' questions and answering someone for a little bit. So we'll spend some time answering while you guys are here. Does the Fomans have a fifth-wheel hitch on it? It doesn't have a fifth-wheel hitch on it. Well, yes, yes. It, well, okay. No, it has a ball on the back of it. So yes, I can put a I can put a, a fifth wheel trailer on it. Um, it's underneath, but it doesn't have an actual fifth wheel plate. I guess that was what I was thinking. So, but yeah, it does. It does have the option for for a. Uh, how do you put twins on the? Don't know. Oh, on the case, twins on the case. Uh, oh, twin tires, like twin supers, like this. It wouldn't happen. You don't have special rims made. And guys, definitely. Uh, just so you know, they are putting eight of these bad boys, these LSW 1400s on the Big Bud 747. They're going to put eight of them on there. They're building special rims to put it on that tractor. So yes, the Big Bud 747, it's happening really soon, really soon. And I'll probably get some updates for you guys on that. It's going to be awesome. I'll share it around, but hopefully someday I'll get to see that thing, but it's going to look sweet. Uh, hey, Nick, uh, I'm a blueberry farmer in Michigan. That's awesome. I love blueberries. My wife would absolutely kill to have a blueberry farm. She loves blueberries. Uh, talk CRP. We don't have much left. Just a little teeny bit. Actually, no, we're done. We're done with CRP. We're officially done on our farm. No more CRP. Uh, that's a government program that they did back in this, what, 80s to take up, uh, take up farmland that they didn't want basically farmers to farm it. They were just going to pay to not turn it to grassland, let it be for animals and wildlife. And well, those days were long past us. So um, have you all seen a 9380 case? 9380. I don't think I've seen a 9380. Uh uh. I don't think I've seen 9380. Uh what crop are you planting after spring wheat? Um I don't know if we're gonna fallow after spring wheat or if we'll come back in with we might come back in with peas. It's gonna be really hard ground. We might come back with peas this fall. Uh but I mean, not this fall, next year, this next year. I'm trying to think about getting some canola, some canola or mustard. I really would like to get an oil seed crop on our farm. It's just another hassle to worry about, but I really think the rotation aspects are beneficial. A lot of guys are doing it, and I think that's smart. So I, I don't know. I don't know yet, but um, we'll probably try to recrop some of it next year. Definitely some of it. Some of it will probably follow. Uh, what about barley? Barley would be a good idea. We haven't done hardly any barley. A lot of guys right here are doing barley. I, I know it's a great rotational crop, and... 
We'd probably be, I don't know, we need to look into that. I'm, 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 I'm curious to see how it goes, but it would be a good idea to do some, some barley. I haven't, we haven't done barley in a long time. I hate barley because it's so itchy, but if there's a market for it, it's worth doing. When we do potatoes, no way we can do potatoes. Can't do soybeans. They won't grow here. Our climate just isn't going to work for them. So corn? No, sorry, no corn. No corn. I'll leave that for Zach. MM Millennial, how farms work. Uh, Col, Col the Corn Star, Harmless Farmer. All those guys, uh, Hard Tongue Family Farms, Brian's Farming Videos, Mike Less Farming, though, he's a more of a farm hand, helps out. But all those guys, they can have the corn. I would actually love to grow corn, but we just can't grow it here. Not going to happen. Not going to grow. We can only grow 25 bushel spring wheat, okay? You'd be lucky to grow probably 10 bushel corn if you could. Uh, peanuts, maybe, someday. What is the benefit of bigger tires? Okay, well, the benefit of bigger tires is definitely good when you're in swampy muddy conditions or flotation they're going to help you float across the ground better without sinking in and two for traction if you're in a high horsepower tractor like say a i don't know john your nine rx or case 620 quad track or what's uh what's the versatile big versatile delta track if you're in one of those big high horsepower tractors I guess not the Delta track or Niner X or Quad track because I don't have quads on it. But, you know, the tire version is what I'm trying to say. A 600 horsepower track with these bad boys on it, um, you're going to get close to the same traction, if not, and slippage of tracks. And it's a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. So that's that's the benefit to, to having big tires is you're getting benefits of tracks without this price tag because tracks are like, to put tracks on this combine, I've, I've heard it could be between eighty and $100,000. To put these tires in this combine, about $20,000. So, I mean, that's the difference there. We run 1,200 floaters tires on our 8120 combine. That's awesome. <laughs> Why use such a stud? It's the facial hair. I haven't shaved it. Once it's gone, I'll have that baby face again, and then uh, and then the whole the stud factor is not going to happen anymore. Plus, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit weak. I need to go to the gym in the morning. Got to work on that. Hopefully get my skinny legs back into muscle shape. Uh, let's see here. Do you prefer a fat tire or dual? I don't know yet. That's the whole point of this is we get to try. We get to try this massive tire versus duals. And I haven't, I've had some time in a 9230s and 9120 with duals. So I kind of know how those combines feel. But this year we'll get a lot of time. It'll be interesting to see. I'm really curious to see which ones are the smooth combine ride and which one's rough and which one feels like it floats better. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the better ride. I just, I don't know how it couldn't be. But time will tell. Time will tell. Um, no, I'm not going to start the case. It's like a 12.9 liter engine. So um, let's see here. Will float tires be more bouncy? I don't think so. I don't think so. They're pretty low sidewall. Uh, the pressure in them is going to be pretty high. I don't think they'll be bouncy. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't, guys, I haven't actually driven this combine yet with these tires. I have yet to do it. Only leg arms has driven it. So I have no experience yet with this. I got to put this phone down on something real quick so I can rest my rest my hands. Let's see, let me find something I can click this to. That's not sideways. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me go over here. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, my arm's getting tired of holding this phone. Let me put this right there. That is perfect. Oh, is it not metal? There that is. Oh, there. Okay. Oh, much better. Got enough power, gonna plug the power cord, put that back in my pocket. Okay, where were we? What time is it? It's 9 17. I should probably sign off here in a second. It's been on a while, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, show the Mac Dons. We'll take a look at them real quick for you guys as I just put the camera down to relieve my shoulder from holding this phone. A lot of bird droppings on here because the birds got into our building and decided they'd have a party all winter long in there. Um, overall, pretty good. These are definitely used headers, but. Just from our observation, I think um, they look like they're pretty good. I don't think there's a lot of excessive wear on them. Canvases look good. This one's got a pretty nice cross auger in it. So if we do some canola or mustard, we have a combine set up to handle and a canola or mustard. So that's good. Got the cross auger. The center section looks pretty good. I mean, I don't know. Either, uh, yeah, we haven't ran them yet, but overall, they look they look like they're really good, really good combines. I'm really excited to run them this year. Or not combines, headers. <laughs> really good headers. So we're, we're, we're excited to run them. One thing we have to do on this header, though, which is kind of a bummer. I didn't know this even existed. We found this out after we got the combine. But this is a special header that was designed to be 
taken apart or cut so it could be put in a shipping container to be sent overseas out of the USA. So what it means is there's this joint right here. Look at this joint. See this? The other, the other header does not have this. Well, that's not really a problem. It's plenty strong right here. But what happens, if you look over here, this is kind of frustrating, but I guess it's fixable. We didn't notice until after we got it. Look at that sickle bar. See the curl right there? There's a joint, a joint right here, right where this axle is. And the bolts get loose and it, it, it folds up. So what we were told is to undo the bolts underneath there, press this down and just weld it all up. Cause it'll never be taken apart again. And then that way we'll get a straight cutter bar again. So kind of a bummer, but I guess it's fixable. We'll get on that in the next, in the next, uh, next week. Probably we'll have that all welded up and get to go and straighten. So, um, are the heads quick connect? Yes, they are. They are quick connect. They have the little connector that plugs in and out real fast. Uh, what's my favorite crop to harvest? Spring wheat. I love spring wheat. Spring wheat. Well, okay. Winter wheat. Let's just, let's just go winter wheat. Winter wheat's easier threshing than spring wheat. So winter wheat, winter wheat's really easy to cut. What about seeding hemp? I don't know if we have enough moisture to do hemp here. Uh, I'm a little, there's guys in the area that are doing it, but they're usually irrigated ground. I got a feeling we're just too dry for hemp. How is leg arms? He's doing great. Fired, but great. Um, let's see here. That would suck to break in the middle of the field. Yes, that would really, really stink to break in the middle of the field. That would be absolutely terrible. So we're not going to let that happen. We're going to fix it. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. okay. Which bud tractor do I like the most? Probably the series two, but after the series three restoration is done, there's a good chance that's probably gonna be our new favorite tractor just cause it's gonna look so good. And the cap's gonna be so nice. Um, video tomorrow. Yes. First thing video tomorrow, hopefully eight o'clock, uh, my time. That's mountain standard time. We'll see how that goes for everybody else. Definitely doing that. Um, <laughs> I have a sweepstakes to try the base bind. I'll enter it. Okay. We'll figure that out. We'll do that. Uh, da, da, da. what year did you guys get the 4020? We actually don't have a 4020. We have a 4520, 4520. And as far as year, I don't think they bought it new. I'm pretty sure it's a used tractor. Uh, well, it's used now, but it was a used tractor when they bought it. This is a live stream. Yes, it is. Grid Fusion definitely is a live stream. Can't see how much longer I'll be on. Um, I want a tinkle. Have you tried growing a beard for more than a month? I actually have gotten really close, Cutler, to growing a beard. But no, I usually shave it off. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. What do you think a beard on this face? Would that even look good? That good? I don't like the feeling of facial hair after a while. I, I got to get past that itchy stage, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. Having stuff in your beard, drinking food in it. I, I, I don't know if I'd like a beard. I'm not sure. I'm just, maybe someday I'll grow it. But we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, da -da, what crop is the money maker? That is a good question. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine because right now, wheat commodities are in the tank. Pea commodities are in the tank. Chickpea commodities are in the tank. Lentils are in the tank. Mustard's actually got a decent market. Canola's got a decent market if you can grow it. Should have probably done some of that. Uh, you know, I think lentils might have a decent market later this year. There's a good chance chickpeas could turn around. Yellow peas are saying might rebound some. Wheat, I don't know if that's going to rebound. I don't think there's a lot of hope for that to get above $6 here. We really could use $6 wheat. So there really isn't a good cash crop at this point right now in where we're at. Unless you get a really good... Uh, lock in a good price somewhere so have i been to texas i've never been to texas if i go to texas though i'd love to go track down jay hill if you guys ever uh, follow hill jay on instagram he's a character he's also very very uh very uh knowledgeable on a lot of crops they have a massive operation down there and they grow all kinds of crops it's just really neat so definitely a different type of farming um how's the family the family's been really good i've been really good too i haven't had a migraine in a long time since i got off coffee so that's really nice uh, let's see, when will we get a new equipment shed? I don't know. Hopefully soon. We're hopefully looking at getting something done soon. I don't know if it's going to happen this fall or not. We got to make some money first. It's just got to get money in the bank. Got to have good money sitting there so you can do those kind of expenses. And a building always gets put off because, well, it's not necessary. It would be really nice. It's not necessary. So, yeah. Uh, how get buying stuck? I'm not sure. Okay, what else we have here? Come to New Zealand. I'd love to go to New Zealand. I'd love to go to New Zealand. That'd be a great place to visit. Uh, what's it like in Montana? It's really nice. Montana's a good state. There's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, why is the image reversed? I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say why it's reversed. So, well, I suppose, guys. Um, I should probably 
shut down the stream soon and turn it off. So thanks guys for watching. Thanks for being a part of the channel. Thanks for doing everything I've been doing. Thanks for following. Hey from Australia, how are you today, Nick? I'm doing very good, Sam Dwyer. Three bucks, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being a part. Thanks for doing everything. And uh, we will uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Tomorrow, watch the video. It'll be great. Oh, if you want it for a second. My sister's here. She wants to say hi. Hi, guys. We love you guys. You're fantastic. Nick has the best fans in the world, and we just love reading your comments, love reading what you post, and uh, it's a joy to the whole family to have all of you here. They watch quite a bit. They keep yeah. tabs on everything. They're watching so. me uh, fetch for Patch. Dog's awesome. He is obsessed with fetching. Patch! He's a fun dog. Come on, Patch. Bring it back. It's funny, they're brothers, and one cares about fetching, and everyone can care less. <laughs> All right, guys, that was my sister, Laura. Take care, guys. We'll see you. Have a good one. God bless. We'll see you soon. I'll do live streams more. I'll do live streams more, I promise. They're going to happen more. Now I got the whole chat thing fixed. They're going to happen more. So take care, guys. Have a good one. And shut off any minute now.